A, get out of your feelings. A, get out of your feelings. Nobody told you to walk away just because you're feeling a certain type of way. Look for a new job, take you a vacation, right? And then get to a bigger bag. That's A. B, do not put off what it's going to cost you long term. You do not want to sit here and talk about, I don't feel like working for the next year and then have to work for two or three years past your retirement age and, and, and try to catch up. The one thing that's interesting about money that I try to teach you guys and I try to help you to understand things a little bit differently is that your money is most powerful when it turns into a snowball. It's just like YouTube. It's just like content creation, right? You kick a pebble, you kick a pebble down the little um, the mountain, it starts to snowball. Compound interest versus simple interest. That video is down in the description. Well, not in the description. The Patreon link is down in the description that has that video. Your money is much more powerful the sooner you invest it. Because I want to talk about quitting your jobs. Right? So it's a couple different things and a couple different articles that I want to share. And then I want to give you my thoughts based off of these things that we glean from, from the information that we have. And sometimes we have to combine information in order to make a, a, a better assessment of what it is that we need to do and to strategize going forward, all right? So labor shortage, one of the reasons, 2.5 million people retired during the pandemic. Unprecedented numbers. I know some of my mentors that make a lot of money. Corporate executives said, Anton, you know what? We wrapping it up, fam. We realize we don't know how much time we got left and we still got our wits about us and we young and I'm still going to mentor you. But I'm thinking about getting out of corporate. And for me, it was like, oh, I, can't, I can't believe that you actually looking to walk away. All I've ever known you your entire life is to work and grind. He said, Anton, what am I going to do with all this money if I can't enjoy it? Let's continue. 2.5 million people retired during the pandemic. Reports of labor shortages may not end anytime soon because a hefty number of retirement workers have left the labor force and a lot of them ain't coming back. All right. There was a lot of people that got their money up. <laughs> Somebody said they didn't know. <laughs> it was a lot of people. Yeah, this mic is bad. This boss. There's a lot of people that, that got their money up. They've been stacking. They've been chilling. Now they said, you know what? I'm not about to be dealing with uh having to take a take the jab in order to go back into work and none of that. We chilling. We are good. All right. Um, a note from Golden Sachs led uh, researchers led by Jan found that 3.5 million of the people who left the labor force meaning they're not working or actively looking for work, are over 55. So once you hit over 55, uh, possibly over 59 and a half, you're like, I'm chilling. I'm going to get the Social Security check. I'm going to be chilling. I'm going to start drawing down on my 401k. I got my money put up, my money right. We made a lot of money during the, the pandemic. We chilling. Roughly 1.5 of them were early retirements and 1 million were normal retirements. So what's happening right now, ladies and gentlemen, is that there's a shortage of people that's available for work because a large segment of these people that held these jobs down for so long said that we done. And now there's a lack of available talent to replace them. And so this is partially what's feeding into inflation the great resignation, all of this stuff. We're not taking into account the people that saying that I'm tired and I want to live the rest of my life on my own terms. OK, those two groups of retirements likely won't reverse, meaning that out of the five million workers, Goldman estimates are still missing from the labor force. About half may never return. Now, what I'm trying to figure out before we start deep diving heavily into this article <clears throat> is what's up with the other 2.5 million of these people that's just saying, yo, I'm chilling. We going to get to them in a minute, all right? <laughs> the bad news for the labor crunch market, as Wendy's closes dining rooms early, 
A child care company in California is shutters because it can't hire and cleaning companies are canceling jobs because they don't have the people to staff them. However, it could be good news for job seekers who remain and have been able to leverage shortages to get better wages and demand better conditions. So what we're seeing also in this uh, labor market and job market is that people are, be are better able to negotiate their wages and things. I just read a report that there's companies that have raised the wages significantly, which they then raise prices and so on and so forth, which again, this feeds into inflation. If you're not a part of the Patreon, then link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. However, there are people that are using this opportunity to negotiate for better packages to get to the bag, ladies and gentlemen. All right. <clears throat> Research from the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City found that had retirement kept pace with its trend from 2010 to 20, there would have been 1.5 million more retirees during the pandemic. But that number actually came in over 3 million. The number of early retirees alone accounted for uh, predicted retirement numbers. Tends to be sh uh, stickier than other reasons someone might leave the labor force. Because of that, we therefore expect the participation shortfall from early retirees will unwind relatively slowly through fewer new retirements going forward. So basically what we're saying is, what they're giving you, I'ma summarize, listen, I'm, I'm a C student, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting it, right? What they're telling you is that these people were eventually gonna retire anyway, but we accelerated the pace. So maybe things will start to slow down a little bit as we continue to fill these shortages and there won't be an exaggerated number of people that's walking away from the labor force for good, AKA retiring, because there was a lot of people that not only retired, but there was a bunch of them that retired even earlier because they was like, listen, I'm done with this. I'm not about to be sitting here competing with people. All right. Um... 2.5 million retirees abstaining will probably be acutely felt for now. Good news for workers who continue to switch into new roles and push wages higher, but it means that labor shortages may stick around for a little while longer. Cool. Awesome. All right, so let's do a little bit more deep diving, right? We want to do a little bit more deep diving. <laughs> What's going on, Miss Jennifer? Want to have some more conversations. We got a full show. Don't worry. We're doing the work today on this Sunday because Sunday is actually the beginning of the week, not Monday. I don't care what the Labor Department told you. Now, it's another conversation and another uh, thing that's happening, right? In which they're saying that in this great resignation, they giving you the blueprint on how to. Let's stop that. We're going to stop that. Hold on. They're giving you the blueprint on how to financially prepare to quit your job. So remember when I asked y'all about the other 2.5 M of y'all? The other 2.5 million of y'all? Remember when I was asking y'all about them? This is speaking to you. This is speaking to you. How to financially... <laughs> y'all should not be looking to quit your job, but we're going to talk about it anyway. How to financially prepare to quit your job. This part is talking to y'all. All right. Now, I went over a couple of points and I said, you know what? I'm not even going to read no more because I want to read this live for the first time and react to it just like everybody else, because there's some things that they said that I don't agree with. But the way that they broke this down is for the short term. Then they went into the immediate term. Let's expand that. And then they went into the long term. So we're going to break it down really quickly, right? How to financially prepare to quit your job. With emotions high between the ongoing pandemic and workers leaving their jobs in droves thanks to the great resignation, you may find yourself wondering, should I quit my job too? Now, some of y'all, y'all know better, all right? A lot of y'all know better. Sit your monkey butt down and take your monkey butt to work. Listen, not only am I telling you don't quit your job, I'm telling you you might need a second job. 
Now, I'm not telling you you shouldn't take into consideration the possibility of getting another job, right? They're never going to pay you as much as the place that you've been at for the last 10 years. And then the amount that can come along with it if you decide to take a competing offer for a rival company or something like that. But we definitely not going to let you just walk away because you don't feel like it anymore. Get your butt down and get in them dumps and stop playing so many video games and get on your grind so you can live the life that you're supposed to live, okay? So let's continue. Self-engineering said uh, going after a second IT, IT job. So I love the labor shortage. For a lot of us, we're capitalizing off of it. For a lot of us, we're capitalizing off of the fact that there's an opportunity at hand, an opportunity at hand for us to absolutely take over the world. But it's not going to come just because you feel like it. It's going to come because you're intentional. All right. Um, let's go into this article. While it can be tempting to walk away from an unfulfilling you and your feelings, unfulfilling gig without a plan, doing so come with its own set of stressors. That's why it's so crucial to take a look at your financial health first. They spoke with several experts. Well, we're going to find out just how much of an expert they are. To find out the best way to do this as you navigate a job or a career change. So for the short term, we're going to break this down into three parts, ladies and gentlemen. For the, for the short term, okay? They got her with her whole box and walking out smiling. While your first concern might, uh, may be paying your immediate bills if you leave your job without another one lined up. Now, why would anybody leave their job without another one lined up? At the very least, find the new position. Maybe get your start date a month out so you can enjoy yourself a little bit. But you don't just walk away with something without nothing lined up. What are we, six? There's even more to consider before making a major move. Isabel Barrow, director of financial planning for Edelman Financial Engines, told Yahoo Money. <clears throat> You'll think, need to think about three categories of your finances, debt, cash flow, and expenses. Okay. You should have 24 months of monthly expenses saved before leaving a job. Two years, y'all. She's saying you should have at least two years put up before you're leaving your job. Three to six months is undercutting it. So if you only got three to six months of living expenses and you're saying, yo, I'm walking away, I'm tired. She's saying that you're in trouble. All right. As a whole, we need to revisit that advice. You need to look at all the worst case scenarios, unfortunately. <clears throat> Instead of building up a cash reserve, Stephen, founder and CIO at Hanover Advisors, also suggested turning your investments or opening a line of credit if your nest egg is not where it like to be, if where you'd like to be. Now, this could not be any more wrong. This is a person. Let's let's just revisit what who this person is. Founder and CIO of Hanover Advisors also suggested turning your investments or opening a line of credit if your nest egg is not where it like to be. Now, anybody that's sitting here telling me that they have a financial advisor and that I need to open up a line of credit if my nest egg is not where it's supposed to be, you need to go and get you a new financial advisor. If somebody is telling you to service a loan and pay interest on that loan and not telling you to buckle down and not freaking quit your job because you don't need to be sitting here talking about quitting your job if you ain't got your finances in order, that's an issue. You telling me that I need to go and get a line of credit. <laughs> Eric said they trying to get more people into debt. You telling me I need to go and get me a line of credit if I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but I'm still thinking about quitting my job without some kind of other job and the wings. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, y'all. And this guy is a CIO of a financial planning company. Interesting. Listen what he's saying. Crazy. <laughs> Dave Ramsey would like to have a conversation with his advisor. This is so crazy. Listen, you can borrow money from your retirement savings to carry you over for a while. Why would anybody 
borrow money that is working for you and it's there so that you can live the rest of your life the way you want to. It's not, look, this person said it's not a bad thing. Let's let's take this whole thing. You can borrow money from your retirement savings to carry you for a while. It's not a bad thing. Also, get a line of credit. What the f- What are we talking about, y'all? This is why everybody that labels themselves or went to school for it to be in a financial advisor, you should not be sitting here talking to. You should not be sitting here talking to somebody that's telling you you can borrow money from your retirement savings to carry you over for a while if you're thinking about quitting your job without something else waiting in the wings. Now, who in a right mind is leaning to this guy for advice? And where did they find him at? Yeah, but listen, you pay the interest to yourself, but the problem is that your money is not making money and you still got to pay yourself back. The key is that you're not even in a position to where you, you can start to really, really leverage what it is that you are making. First, you're paying the fees, right? Secondly, you still got to pay yourself back. Third, you can't even afford to quit your job because you don't have enough money put up to where you can still feel comfortable without having to borrow. It don't, care, it don't matter where you're borrowing it from. I don't care if you're borrowing it from yourself. And most of these people are not just borrowing it from themselves. A lot of them take, take the payout. Whew. Bitcoin Benito says, never resign without a plan because you hate your job. Facts. Absolutely correct. Personally, I'm using crypto staking, providing loans like Hex Token to make 40%. Wow, you're making 40%. That's pretty impressive. But any major token is a win. Do research, but staking is the new cheat code. I did not know that. I'm going to have to do some research, uh, Bitcoin Benito. Thank you for... <laughs> Brandy said no financial advisor would tell you that. Mm. That's not what he said, RCC. And it's no guarantee that you're going to be financially successful just because you're investing in another business. Creating another business for yourself doesn't necessarily mean that you're business savvy or you understand business from a mindset perspective. It means that you're creating another job for yourself. That's what it really means. And it's no guarantee that you're going to be successful. And nobody said anything about creating another business for themselves. What they said in the, <laughs> in the article was that they're thinking about just quitting their jobs and you can borrow money from your retirement savings to carry you over for a while and to get a line of credit. The only reason you would need a line of credit is to expand for yourself. You're already making money. Oh, this is crazy. If you're self-disciplined and pay it off quickly, taking one is not the end of the world, especially if you can get a lower interest rate. If you're considering any of these options, it's a good idea to talk to a financial advisor first. Cool. Just don't talk with um, Stephen from Hanover Advisors. Please don't talk to Stephen from Hanover Advisors. Um, I agree with that. Lower your living expenses and stacking your chips for the immediate term. They're saying one of these issues are addressed said it's time to consider how the choice will affect your finances in the next year and take necessary precautions. Again, the question is, why are you quitting your job without something else lined up? Why are you messing up the bag? If you haven't refinanced and you own a home, do it before you leave the job. If you're buying a car, you'll want to do that first too. Now, why would anybody buy a car and then quit their job? Interesting as you will not qualify for these loans if you are unemployed. Why would an unemployed person be looking to quit their job and buy a car? Are we all backwards? Am I the crazy one? Why is this a, a, a article that's on the, on the front page that was sent to me? I'm really, I'm really curious if I'm hearing this wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm curious if, if we hearing this wrong. I am, I am. I'm very, very curious. Whew. And medical visits should also be done before you leave. If you anticipate other expenses upcoming outside of your regular living, you may want to consider pulling back on your investments temporarily. 
As far as benefits go, it's worthwhile to speak to human resources at your current job to find out what your options are available. So they want you to go on COBRA. They want you to continue your benefits. Sometimes you can extend those and you can continue to get coverage if you pay out of pocket. Well, you won't be paying out of pocket long if you're paying it based off of the fact that this same gentleman is telling you to quit your job, take out a line of credit, borrow against yourself. Is it me or is everything backwards? Is everything backwards? I'm going to give you the real game after we go over this foolishness because, again, I didn't read this whole thing. Um, for the long term, maybe they gave, they're going to give us some good advice for the long for, for the long term. I agree, but we have to have these conversations because all advice is not good advice, ladies and gentlemen. All right. If you decide to leave, be mindful that you'll need to decide what you do, what to do with your 401k. It's shocking how much money employees leave behind in forgotten retirement accounts. Nearly 1.4 trillion to be exact. It's a lot of people leave a lot of money behind in, in forgotten retirement accounts. Make sure when you leave a job, Take your retirement plan with you or keep up with the one you established with your former employer. Okay, that makes sense. Speaking of planning for the future, let's see. How leaving your job now can mean working past your ideal retirement age. Now, why would anybody want to work further into the time that their body's starting to break down instead of living your life la vida loca? I don't want to work longer than I have to. I don't want to work longer than I have to at 39 years old today. Why would I want to be working into my 60s if I don't have to? That makes no sense. Hmm. One of the things that gets lost in consideration is how much of your retirement savings you may miss out on if you're out of work. I can't wait to give you all my real insight. You could be pushing it back two or three years. If your job offers a pension or retirement benefits, you could be losing out on those as well. Basically, what they're telling you is that you fumble in the bag by saying that you don't feel like working anymore. I heard from people that said they're so fed up with the lack of work-life balance that they can't do it anymore. They're caught up in their feelings. One conflict with the boss, and it causes you to want to go for that nuclear option. Instead, take a vacation, take a mental health day, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. All right, so now we can get out of this foolishness so I can actually break down exactly what's going on, what you should be doing, all right? A, get out of your feelings. A, get out of your feelings. Nobody told you to walk away just because you're feeling a certain type of way. Look for a new job, take you a vacation, right? And then get to a bigger bag. That's A. B, do not put off what it's going to cost you long term. You do not want to sit here and talk about, I don't feel like working for the next year and then have to work for two or three years past your retirement age and, and, and try to catch up. The one thing that's interesting about money that I try to teach you guys and I try to help you to understand things a little bit differently is that your money is most powerful when it turns into a snowball. It's just like YouTube. It's just like content creation, right? You kick a pebble, you kick a pebble down a little um the mountain it starts to snowball compound interest versus simple interest that video is down in the description well not in the description the patreon link is down in the description that has that video your money is much more powerful the sooner you invest it 